quick art talk time, um, guys. So yeah, thank you for joining us today. It has been a little while. Um, you know, Christmas stuff, wrapping up the last uh, focal point term, all these, uh, basically it's just excuses, don't worry. Today we wanted to talk uh, to, you know, my girlfriend, and you might think like, oh, you know his girlfriend, he wants to show her off, but, but don't worry, she actually knows her shit, because as it turns out, she's also um, an artist like me, but she took kind of a different path in her life. And so I think she could be able to explain it much better than I do. So, ladies and gentlemen, I would like to present to you Tiffany Meng. Hello. Thanks for having me on the show. <laughs> um, so I guess I should start off by talking about Yeah, who so yeah, hello. It was awesome to have you. So <laughs> what we want to do here is... Um, it's, it's basically an experiment. I'm just experimenting with my girlfriend because what we want to also do during these focal point quick art talk times is I, I still don't didn't figure out the name. Let's just call it quick art talks, right? Um, that I'm going to once in a while invite speakers. Yeah, um, next one in line should really be Darek Zabrotsky, which is you know also you know the the, the boss, the the man of focal point. Together we founded it, of course. But yeah, for now it's uh, my girlfriend, and uh, yeah, she's acing it too. So please tell us who you are. Um, so like Miha said, my name is Tiffany, and I am an illustrator and fine artist. Now aspiring fine artist, uh, living in San Diego. But right now I am here visiting him in Gdansk. Um, yeah, I studied. I actually came from an animation background. I studied at USC. And after, USC, so tell us uh, what University USC. of Southern California in LA. Right. And after working, uh, freelancing and working at a couple studios, I actually got the opportunity to work uh, on a film called Loving Vincent, where I was an animator. And I lived in Gdansk for uh, six months in 2016, and that experience really changed my life and the path I wanted to do. So after that, I came back. I met so many amazing artists, and I, I had been drawing and painting traditionally all my life, and I wanted to re-pursue that, um, you know, as well as working in illustration and animation. Um, so that is basically what I've been doing. I live in San Diego. I have a studio there with two good friends, and um, I... I illustrate i paint in my free time and i just try to work towards that idea. right <laughs> awesome and to cater to like because i think like most of the audience are like concept artists mm -hmm. um, um aspiring concept artists or concept artists that already work in the field um i know that you also did concept art right with mm -hmm. the skills that you have can you tell us your experience of what you experienced uh during your concept art career yeah. like what kind of companies you worked for um, what did you actually do as a concept artist? Yeah, so I work freelance for um, a few commercial companies with um, Mustache Productions, Silo Films, uh, Disney, uh, LA Fiction, and Breakthrough Films. Um, and so through all of them, I was designing concepts for backgrounds, for commercials, um, for Disney, and for um, commercials um, for Target, for different products. Um, so those are all 2D, um, so that was fun. Um, it was a lot of line art. So I got to do a variety of different styles. And then for Breakthrough Films, I was a concept artist for, um, I worked in, the it was a projection mapping studio, a Bart Cressa studio. So that was really fun. We got we worked for clients such as Universe Studios, HBO, Disney. Um, I got to work on the season seven premiere party for uh, Game of Thrones. Yeah, you did some Game of Thrones stuff, right? Yeah, so yeah. that was really awesome. We projected, we're the first ever people to project on the Disney concert you were high-fiving Jon Snow, right? I was. I met Jon right. Snow, Jerome Flynn, um, Jon Snow's girlfriend. His name is slipping from my mind. Um, Rosie? Yeah, I've heard it. Um, Egret. It's Egret. 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 Yeah. Right. Um, yeah, it was a really fun experience. And I also designed the HBO Emmys Party um, Look Awards for all the projections that were going on uh, there at the Pacific Design Center. Um, so yeah, it was a really fun, um, I worked there for about a year after I came back from Loving Vincent and that was a lot of heavy, um, 3D, uh, sorry, not 3D, 2D, um, but to, um, actually kind of painting with light. Um, so if, for those of you who aren't familiar with 3D projection mapping, it's basically you, you project on different surfaces, such as buildings, any surface that the client wants and you transform it into completely something else. So for example, for Universal Studios, um, in Japan, the walls that um, that they built, like the city, like the little town walls, we we transformed that. We we created concepts for the um, 
driller from Transformers to drill through and make it look like the walls were breaking down, or when Jurassic Park, um, the dinosaurs, like that was all projected. Through. Yeah, it's all projected, and but it looks completely three D. So and these projections. So to just make it clear, so I I just want to say to to everybody that you can see like in how many forms and in how many. Right. Um, executions and styles concept art can come right like i mean when when we teach concept art we aim of course more for the film and video game industry but your example is like you know more like commercials um projections and these projections for example they only work in certain lighting right like only nighttime yes only nighttime um so that's when you see the maximum very important to mention that i think yeah yeah nighttime um if you go on bart cross's studio i'm i guess i'm just ripping um Promoting yeah, him right now, you're yeah, like promoting, <laughs> um, promoting him. Yeah, th- there's a lot of yeah. cool projects you can see. And actually, when I talk about this, a lot of people who are studying animation and and um, concept art are actually really interested, and they ask more about it because it mm-hmm. it combines. Th- there's a lot of 3D that goes on. There's a lot of 3D modeling. They have talented 3D artists that go on there. Um, a lot. Um, of course, 2D concept art, which they have a great team in Lublin and, right, yeah. and Warsaw. And it all starts from the same thing as Poland, you right? do. Yeah, Just as you do, do. You know, yeah. research, um, gathering textures, gathering different ideas and inspirations for looks. And the only kind of main difference is that your surface is already a pre-planned sort of... You have to design your concept um, based on the surface that um, of that building or that wall. For example, the Z Concert Hall has to fit that actual building so that when they project on it it transforms like we can transform the disney concert all into a huge ice ice block cube you know to fit the fire and ice kind of thing right so it's all about and it's all about for me i love it because it's painting with color and with lighting basically and you're basically creating shadows and light and creating the illusion that something is popping out or hiding in through basically really like yeah. kind of rendering skills too so it all kind of fits in the same so it's, same it's, it's shape is also very important right yeah, because shape, play with shape it, and colors yeah. and and i've seen you doing these projections and one thing that would like bog my mind is that of course they have to be painted on a black background yes because yeah right because it is very um because it is a projection you cannot start with start on a white canvas yeah right? yeah you it's all about that's it's painting from like a black canvas and bringing right. the light out awesome yeah cool yeah. yeah that's very interesting to know and yeah the, the more i saw you work the more of course my horizons also were widening up even though i've been in the industry as well for you know uh, many years so yeah it's awesome to um to share that here as well um in previous episodes i talked here about you know how i define concept design uh, but of course that is also only my opinion like i told everybody it's a creative process and you can see it explain it in many ways even though i still believe that there is a fundamental rule and set of things that you have to learn in order to become a concept artist that's what we do at focal point as well um but tell us how you define concept art that's like well, actually, i wanted to yeah. really ask that yeah i will say because you're a fine artist by heart right yeah, you yeah. are more about the right. emotional you right. paint plain air you you like make realistic reinterpretations of the landscapes you exaggerate colors right but you've done some concept art in your career and with the experience that you have and maybe the things that you've see me doing and all the other concept artists that you know um how do you define concept art um i think for me it's about transmitting or conveying a a specific idea across that might not necessarily be a total you know like pretty picture but more of trying to create the whole holistic look of whether you're working on a game or a film actually I will say after I met you you really helped me understand more what concept art is because before, oh wow thank you yeah no it's true I'm not trying to butter you up right but butter <laughs> no because before I always thought oh concept art like coming from animation like this step it's like about creating pretty pictures and pretty colors but now I think after hearing you talk in workshops and everything it's really helped me to find uh, think that about it's really about translating the quick the idea quickly and efficiently um, of course accurately um, you know whether it be in an environment or like of a, a prop design a mech or of a certain cinematic scene um, and and it's interesting because 
because like for example like like when I see you or you or other people paint like you know they like photo bash or they and I've never really done really mm -hmm. done that a lot but then you said that it was you know it's it doesn't matter like it's just about getting the idea across and if you can do it you know through whatever means then mm -hmm. that's the most important thing and I'm just sort of more of a tradition where I like I don't want to color pick I want to create like a um just a scene mm -hmm. that you know is yeah. you know from my you know like yeah so not color picking or not photo bashing like kind of like from like planar painting or from photo references or from my mind so I think that's where you really help me kind of see the differences and see kind of how what a large scope that concept art can encompass it is a large that scope and thanks to you sense. I learned how <laughs> wide that scope can be so we're learning from one another I yeah, guess definitely. we are we are definitely what I learned from uh, Tiffany is that she helped me to dive into the more traditional mediums a year ago, I started a little bit with traditional mm -hmm. paintings. Got him into gouache. I yeah, a little bit. Kit. And what I can learn from that, guys, is definitely the, the, the traditional aspect. I'm able to fuel my digital works with better knowledge about colors. Because now I know by hand how to mix the colors. Mm -hmm. I know how to exaggerate them. I know I, I don't have only now this logic mind where I only go for what only works as you know a concept but i am able to present it also more art artistically it's mm -hmm. like having you know uh, good pasta on a plate i'm thinking about pasta constantly <laughs> now because of you he <laughs> likes my pasta it's a, like if you if you if you like give the same pasta to somebody if you present it on a shitty plate versus on a very nice plate with some i don't know lemon on the side with mm -hmm. wine like mm -hmm. which which one would you choose right Obviously it's the, the last yeah you know with some nice candlelight so it's about presentation so the artistic emotional execution of concept art can impact you know how you communicate mm -hmm. that idea mm -hmm. and that is a very very healthy mixture and yeah it's cool that you mentioning photo bashing uh, you know uh, 3D tools, all these things are, of course, very super important for concept art. But, you know, me and Derek are always slamming, you know, our students through, you know, their, their skulls, basically, how important it is to have those fundamental right. skills first. Right. And you specialize in those fundamental skills. So tell us, uh, why are the skills you use also important for concept design? Yeah, I think um, for those of you who don't know, I'm an avid planar artist and I, I really, really advocate that planar painting or studying outside on location is so important to even hone your skills, even if you're just a primarily a digital artist. Because for one thing, you see more colors on site and, and practicing from painting on life, from life with a time restraint. And when you're actually mixing your colors and not just color picking, it will help you improve 10 times faster. I absolutely guarantee it. Um, so yeah, I think that everyone, whether you're a digital artist, or you're a fine artist, you should always be painting, you know, even if it's not, you know, not every day, but, you know, trying to study, always observing from life, like Michal talked about in his last art talk, you know, instead of being on your phone all the time, you know, always be looking around you. I'm always looking around and observing how light hits this way, what colors I see, what colors I feel, how I can transmit it through my paintings and that observation, honing that observation skill is really important, I think. Um, and of course, you know, when you're a traditional painting, you don't have that control Z aspect, which is scary, but also trains you to problem solve and to, um, and, and you just, you, you start thinking quicker and you start, and you can apply all those skills when you're creating, you know, pieces for, you know, your triple A game or you, you know, when you're working around the clock mm -hmm, for, mm -hmm. for a studio. Um, so all those skills, I think, can really translate. Traditional skills and digital skills are not separate. I think they can really intermesh and and um, and and really combine with each other. And you know, I know Derek and Mihao both have strong fundamental skills. Like Mihao, he still does line drawings. I see his amazing sketchbook every day. And you know, he's still practicing those skills, not just digitally, but to practice those motor skills as well. And you know, I think that's that's really important. Yeah, I think, um, yeah, I mean, you're, you're talking in a way that, you know, it really like channels the passion. So I hope that you can guess, guys see it. So I think the main thing that we can also learn from it is, you know, the passion. It's like there are concept artists that will only like focus on, you know, that that end result just to get there as fast as possible. Right. Mm -hmm. um, and then you can you can totally work like that. But I see that concept artists that are also, you know, into traditional, they're able mm -hmm. to they they basically widen 
their horizon, right? Mm -hmm. They are really mm -hmm. able to just pick things like they can execute one piece of concept in different artistic styles mm -hmm. and I think it's very nice when especially now that I, you, in our game industry there are so many established IPs mm -hmm. it is very handy if you have those traditional skills if you have the knowledge that, that you have in order to readjust yourself on a different art style like for example um, Rockstar Games with their Grand Theft Auto mm -hmm. franchise they have like this um, very um, very um, specific traditional uh, art style to it like if you see their characters it's very nicely painted and I think um, somebody that only photo bashes they would not be able to hire that person so they really need somebody mm. with those traditional skills it's good to be versatile yeah on their example when I was being uh, put on Hitman 2 the latest one that came out last mm -hmm. November that was for me like another way around because I was more showing my concepts in a traditional way mm -hmm. line art um, mm -hmm. uh, handmade renderings and then I was kind of like scared because that was very like a photorealistic mm -hmm. game and all the previous concept art that I've seen from all the talented people also was very photorealistic. Mm -hmm. So I had to really adjust my style adapt, to it. Yeah, adapt, yeah. Adapt. Another. And I really did that thanks to, you know, my fundamental knowledge. Mm -hmm. Like there was no secret process or something. I, I was just thinking logically about, you know, how light will shine yeah. through that window. You how, very yeah, how exactly, <laughs> how it will, how it will, you know, uh, refract the light across the room right. where it will bounce where the reflections will happen um yeah These so pieces for hitman are amazing she, she is amazing. Uh, it's, no, it's really, all right i i i don't like everything i see but his, i'm not just saying that because i'm his girlfriend but they're really it's funny yeah you are no i'm really not i swear <laughs> It's funny because yes. he thinks in lighting very logically and that's how we balance each other out because he will help me out when I'm not sure why it's something like that, but I just feel the colors and I help him feel the colors more, but he also helps me think more logically in the sense of like the, um, it's perfect. just more scientifically. It's perfect. I guess. It's a perfect balance. Hey, yeah. but, but that's how it is. You know, that's why I believe we need more women in the concept art industry because we are different in that way. Sorry, Men sorry. are more logic uh, driven. Women are more emotionally driven and that makes a golden combination in my opinion anyway um let's see what we can uh, cover next like what is you know you can also like tell us a little bit about your upcoming class that you are having with uh, cgma for now i can uh, you know i i wish that we will be able to do something with you at focal point but you know you are not still here with us but yeah, I'm still with CGMA too. You know, that's, you know, the, the online aspect of it. Um, tell us a little bit why people should, you know, sign up for a class like yours or like any workshop that you're having. And, you know, like what kind of people should be, you think, interested? Is it more for concept artists, illustrators? Is it I like, honestly, is it for everybody? And what are you focusing? Because now that we said that you are um, focusing on traditional media tell us maybe what's your favorite media to work with and what is your main theme you focus on when uh, you educate people mm. well for me i mean i work in gouache and oil um, i also work digitally as well um but i think yes i am i am going to be teaching um the uh, online planner class at cgma um that's going to be announced soon and i'm also um, doing a bunch of workshops next year um in la laguna um georgia possibly out of country as well and of course hopefully with focal point in the future um we hope so too move here um so um yeah i think these kind of workshops i don't i'm not focusing on like the medium itself so much as like you master the medium of gouache but i actually focus on even more the fundamentals that focal point also covers like value composition 
um, uh, the hierarchy of value composition, color, color relationships, color mixing. Um, because, you know, a good painting starts with good value and, of course, good design. And color is almost kind of the cherry on top. You can have different ki- color palettes, but if your value isn't there, then it's going to fall apart. Mm-hmm. So I always cover that in all my workshops. So it's really for beginners or for more advanced um, as well. Um, and I hope that through the classes and workshops that the students will come out, you know, wanting to experiment more with gouache. Um, and of course, seeing the, the beauty and the, the, um, the importance of being with a color mix, you know, knowing your colors, how to mix with limited palettes um, and, and be able to apply that to their digital realm. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I, I love teaching as well, just as Mihao. Uh, we both share that passion of teaching. Um, so I'm, I'm really happy for him that he started Focal Point. And for me as well, I love meeting new people. I love traveling. And I, I just love sharing my passion. For me, it's not even teaching. For me, it's like just sharing my passion um, and being able to paint in different places. Um, so if, yeah, if you guys are interested, just hit me up. Um, and Cool. Really yeah, we'll definitely put some links below down in the description. So you can, if you're interested, you can... Um, of course, you know, check out what she's up to, what her working is along, you know, because the, the video here is running, you see like a sped up video of a Richard Schmidt study yeah, that too. she's doing right now, uh, five times speed. Uh, so still pretty impressive. So you did it like in one hour and 20 minutes, yeah. that piece, yeah. right? Yeah. Um, so yeah, very awesome stuff. And, um, tell us like knowing that, you know, we kind of like both agree, you know, how we define concept art. Um, tell us what your like you know big final tip is for you know aspiring concept artists, illustrations, illustrators, you know from somebody from you know your field because you come slightly from you know a My different idea. angle, but you still know what we're doing. You still it's touch concept art. Yeah. Yeah. So what is your final tip? Like how to get there? How to break through? How to you know? How to break through. Or not even how to break, how to develop efficiently to become a concept designer. There, let's keep it simple, right? I think um, always, always going back and practicing the fundamentals, studying master painters. Um, I think that's a big tip that I can, I can partake. Right now I'm going through that where I'm being, I've been learning a lot about um, different painters. Um, and it's just, I think it really, like it's like osmosis. It helps you grow so much um mm-hmm. you know just studying the classic master painters like edgar payne um john f carlson a.t hibbert you know i mean i can name so many Ed- edward siegel like all these classical painters you know studying classical painters even if you're a concept artist i think is really important and i think a lot of people forget they study you know a lot of current artists you know a lot of current artists in the industry but everyone takes inspiration you know from the world around them or of course from from the old painters you know you can always take something observe how they use value and color and composition and each painter is different i think that's that's where i am right now is um you know besides working on your own personal projects always making sure to study from those painters and you know even doing master studies and really challenge yourself for example to not color pick or to not um um and to really really think about how what you are actively thinking about what you are learning and what amazes you at that moment that you are studying from them and take notes about that um really be proactive about that because it's really easy to forget too um so i think you know sometimes you fall in that rut of you know like just creating pieces for yourself or for work and then you forget to really go back to that mode of studying and i think that's really important for everyone awesome yeah you were explaining in a, in a very rich believable way i'm not going to you know repeat everything that you said i think it is was a you're sending a very clear message yeah so guys let us also down know in the comments you know we are you know open to you know challenge these opinions right um let us know if you agree if you disagree like oh you know photo bashing is enough or 3d is enough or like you know just basic drawing skills yeah let us know because in the end it's a creative process right and i don't want to you know force down my opinion all the time that's why we're having these talks so yeah thanks for um thanks for joining for being the first guest (laughs) thank you yeah and yeah from here we'll see how it goes thanks guys thank you as well i would like to thank you for watching of course uh yeah like and subscribe and all that shit uh you know how it works in this youtube age and other than that i would like to thank you for watching and i hope you enjoyed